the South China Sea stretches from Singapore to Taiwan. It's the largest body of sea after the five oceans. This vast area, more than 35,000 square kilometers of open water, has been the hunting ground for marine archaeologist Sten Shostren. For the past 15 years, Sten has searched shipwrecks for porcelain artifacts that can tell the story of the region's trading history. I like the pottery. I like to correct my own misunderstandings and many others of how old this pottery is. So, well, Good dive, I tell you, Gypsy. Yeah. Do you it's have? a nice dive. Hey, excellent. Sten's passion for marine archaeology in the South China Sea began when he was a naval architect based in Singapore. So I was sailing most weekends up in, in Malaysia, got to know the islands and, and the sailing conditions of those islands. And also, of course, recognizing old navigation spots which had been used centuries before. Looking for clues to establish a search area, Sten turned to records of one of the greatest maritime explorers in history, Admiral Zheng He, also known as Cheng Ho. Admiral Cheng Ho had reported at one time in one of his voyages that he had lost two ships on the distance between two islands. So I made a corridor 10 mile wide. Today I have maybe covered about 10% of that area. And I found 10 shipwrecks in, 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 in that corridor, so to speak. Within this search corridor alone, Sten found shipwrecks from every century over the last millennium. By keeping to a systematic approach to recovery and research of artifacts, Sten has been able to develop a unique chronology of South China Sea trade. But these, these two didn't line up, actually. With the help of these ten shipwrecks, I have satisfied myself that I have proper dating on different kinds of Trees. We supply ceramics to great numbers of international museums who's interested in the ceramics because it's dated, so precisely dated that they can use our type of ceramics for uh, references in their museums. So I would like to know the chronology, because with the chronology of the pottery, you can actually tell of political events in the various countries. Every little artifact including something as seemingly insignificant as fish bones, can shed light on historical trading patterns. When Sten found some fish bones lodged inside storage jars at a wreck site, he sent them to an expert for analysis. And he spent months and months of putting small fragments of fish bones together into three complete specimens of fish, measured the fork length, and could tell us exactly what type of fish it was. The interesting part about that was that it proved that Ayutthaya, the second kingdom in Thailand, actually had a fish industry, an exporting fish industry, already 1370. Much, much, much earlier than what anybody had believed. And when we released that information, there was one research group in America and another one in Germany who both sent an email and said, thank you very much with that research, you have moved our information back 250 years in history. Every time you take up something that corrects the here to written history, and in fact it have happened on all of our shipwrecks. Every single thing, whatever it is on the shipwreck reported, whether or not you understand what it means today, in future it will mean something to somebody. Jingdezhen in southern China has long been the center of production for imperial Chinese porcelain. Sten's hunt for every detail led him here in search of the origins of the artifacts he discovered. Art historians numbers of times had said it's amazing that the Chinese exported so much porcelain and we yet have not found any one single kiln where it was manufactured. We had found imperial kin making porcelain for the emperor, but not the exporting kin. Sten was recently alerted to the discovery of a private kiln that could have produced exactly what he found okay, off the yeah. coast of Malaysia. 
What do you got there? Let me see. Let me see. <laughs> but to actually go back there to the kiln site itself, to dig around ruined kilns looking for production wasters, and then find exactly the same pattern or style or type of pottery as you find in Malaysia. It sort of completes the circle. Now you also know where it was made. Extremely satisfying.